Well, my name's Doris, and I was a CASA about 10 years ago. Initially, I just wanted to become a CASA because I heard about the program. I wanted to give back in some way. I have two great kids. I have a daughter who's had her own problems. And so I feel an affinity with um, girls that are maybe going through a tough time. My supervisor, Pete, directed me to a case with a couple of sisters. I read the case over and thought, yeah, I would be interested in meeting them. My first initial contact with Desiree uh, uh, did not go especially well. I called her and explained who I was and what I'd be doing and kind of what my role was. And she listened and she asked a couple of questions. And then she said, you know, I'm really busy. I have a lot of people in my life. I have a lot of appointments. And actually, I don't really need any more government types in my life. And I thought, oh boy, this is not going to go well. <laughs> so um, I decided to just really back off, give her a lot of space. I could tell she was an independent young woman with some definite ideas, and I didn't want to push her. So um, I focused more on her sister and started meeting with her. And then I kept giving Desiree the option to get together with the two of us. Um, finally, she agreed. And so the three of us went out. And after that, I felt like she and I connected more. Um, as time went on, we just connected more and more, and she would start to uh, call me when she needed something like, um, I'm writing this essay and I wondered if maybe you could help. I have a couple of applications to fill out. I uh, wonder if, you could, if you'd mind coming up and helping me with that which I loved that she called me and I loved doing that. We just kept meeting once a week. Kind of our, our thing that we did was I would pick the girls up and we would go to dinner. Um, Chili's became kind of our hangout. And um, I think we just d developed trust I let her know I was there for her. I wasn't getting paid. I wasn't there for anyone else in the in, in other than being her advocate and making sure that she was getting what she needed, um, that she was getting some direction, any help that she might need. It it just it took a little time, but then what was really cool is she started calling me. And um, I thought, okay, now, now we're getting somewhere. She trusts me. She sees that maybe I can be helpful to her in some way. Her social worker and I, I should say, really worked on her to think about college. Because initially, Desiree was only thinking about going into the military after high school, which, you know, the military is fine. That's a goal she has. But I see her as an officer. And we kept saying, you know, you could finish college and then go in as an officer and still be in the military. So I don't think she thought that was a possibility at first. The more we um, talked about it and showed her how there was financial help, uh, I think she started um, seeing that as an option. Well, I, I think having a CASA, just one person who just cares about you and focuses on you and believes in you and thinks that you're something special and that you can make it can help that kid feel differently and look at life differently. And I'm not saying I did all that for Desiree, but I think causes do that for kids. And so, just one person can make a difference. That's what I've learned. 
I think I achieved developing a relationship with Desiree and developing trust <clears throat> and letting her see that um, there's options in life. She's a strong girl. She probably already knew that, but um, having someone believe in her and, and show her that sky's the limit. Just because of your past, that doesn't have to shape your future. Make your own future with help. I luckily had a great team that I worked with. Um, the social worker and I really hit it off and became friends and um, we both cared about these sisters a lot and so we would talk and meet for lunch and, and email constantly. My supervisor was completely supportive and helpful in directing me to different things that I hadn't thought of that, that could help the girls. The court experience was, um, was quite an experience for me. I hadn't really been that involved before. At first, um, I felt like the judge wasn't listening, uh, but actually I think she was taking it all in and reading the reports really carefully, and at the end I felt like she listened to the CASA, me, and also to the girls, and really took it all to heart weighed it all out and made the best decisions. I think the CASA does have a voice in court. The reports are definitely read and I think taken into advisement for sure. Being a CASA volunteer has given me purpose, giving me the feeling that I'm making a difference, that I'm giving back. It's fulfilling in a way that nothing else I can imagine would be. It's also fun. <laughs> I have enjoyed all the kids that I've been involved with. They make me laugh, they make me cry, um, they make me think, um, and they give me hope. And now I'm going to cry again. <laughs> well, Kids you... are resilient is the lesson that I keep learning. That um, bad things can happen and people, especially kids, can rise above it. They are stronger than we think. Um, and they can have a good life in spite of their background. I would encourage anyone who has the time or the desire to give it a try. Go volunteer. You will be repaid in so many ways of the satisfaction of seeing what you can do to help these kids that may need a little hand up. Um, even if you think you're not cut out for it, give it a shot. You will enjoy it, you will learn from it, and you'll be satisfied with it. Well, uh, when I first went in, I, don't, I can't really remember the exact reason, except my parents were never there for me. And I remember I just wanted to get out of that environment and when I was first placed in the foster care my social worker well right before I was placed in the foster care my social worker came by and she had overheard one of our fight my fights with uh, my mom's boyfriend at the time and I told her it was like this every night she made the call to pull me and my sister out and I remember her asking me 
how I felt about everything and I told her no matter what I'll be alright and uh, she asked the same for my sister. My sister said she was scared but she had hope. So I got in my social worker's car and she drove us to the shelter. I was there for about three weeks which I guess was wasn't very long what I heard about. While I was actually at the shelter I heard about this program called independent living program and I kept that in the back of my mind for a few months while I was placed out at Heritage with a foster family for three, three and a half months and I wasn't too happy there and so I was really excited to get my own place with independent living program and I was there, I got placed there when I was 17 and I loved it. I got really lucky. The lady that I was placed with had heard my name through when I was going through shelter. Uh, I was a softball coach, umpire, and I was always needing rides to go to my umpiring games. Uh, so she was the coordinator and she heard all about me. And when my name came up again several months down the road, uh, she went and got her, she thought about it for a while and went and got her certifications and to become a host home and I lived there for a year and a half before I graduated high school. When me and my casa hung out we went out to dinner, we did, we talked, we talked about school, we talked about all the good things that happened in our week and of course all the bad things. And then we were able to talk about our issues that we had, I guess. Like me and my sister, um, not issues, just problems that we had in the past and we were able to talk about them now. And come t so we were able to resolve them. I stayed in contact with my mom when she was available or when she had time on her phone. Mm, my grandma didn't make much of an effort to talk to me the one who lives close to me, but my grandmother who lives up in Oregon. Uh, she was always calling, you know, seeing how me and her were both doing, and she'd get upset when she couldn't hear from one of us, and she always wanted to make sure we were doing okay. I don't talk to my dad, haven't talked to him in several years. I got a phone call from Casa when I was living Right after I got out of shelter in my first placement up at Heritage, uh, she gave me a phone call and I remember talking to her on the phone and I was really busy with a lot of government stuff because I was trying to get into my new placement at a host home through I, or THPP. And she, so I'm like, have tons of social workers, I have ILP who's involved, I have YDS workers along with who else knows? And then I got this phone call from Casa uh, saying, Hey, I'm Casa. Um, um, was appointed to you by the courts. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Who is this? I don't need any more Casa or any more government types in my life. Well, I really didn't talk to her for a couple months from then. And then I get another phone call from her. And I think she just caught me at a better time, which allowed me to like open my mind up to what was really going on and she said she was going out to dinner with my sister and I still remember the first place where we went and met it was at this uh, diner downtown in Paso and I ordered chili <laughs> remember that but it was a good I'm glad I did it getting to know my casa was pretty easy she was open friendly and she was always willing to listen to me and my sister both. I felt safe talking to her. Uh, I really was able to open up to her after a while. It didn't come easy at first. She had to earn my trust. And down the road, it just became natural talking and she became my friend. Having a casa made my life a little less hectic. Uh, it set some more structure in there because I had help. I had help to do my college applications. I had 
help to write my essays, or even meet up on a Saturday to go down to the library to look for colleges to apply to. When I talked to her, she gave me a new perspective on things and opened my eyes to things maybe I didn't quite see, so I was able to th see things differently. I can't even think about what my life would be without Doris. I, I enjoy her so much. I love calling her when I'm 10 hours away up at college. Or if I'm like in the neighborhood strolling by, hey Doris, want to go out for lunch or you want to meet up, hang out. Before I went away to college, she threw me a pool party and I had all my friends over. It was just a great experience. And just imagine if I didn't have all these things, not even that, if I didn't have her to talk to. I can't even explain how close I've become with her. Um, she's like the aunt I never had type of thing. It's not the pool parties, it's not the, the lunches, it's the time I've spent with her that I enjoy. And she's always there to encourage me and maybe I'm having a rough patch with something and she's there to pick me up when all the government workers and everyone else is gone because I'm grown up and I'm out of foster care now, but I still have my casa. Not even my casa, I still have my friend. What comes best of having a CASA worker is they're not really government related, so to speak, even though I thought they were at one point. They're, they're really just there to listen and help you through whatever struggles you may have. And they're just, they're like, I guess you could kind of look at it as a court appointed friend, but they're, it's not, it's more than that. Um, and I think it's so much more for the worker as well. It's not like a job or like, it should be something that they look forward to and they're wanting to spend this time. If someone's looking for something that they feel like they're missing, maybe being a CASA worker could help answer that. I'm pretty sure I was like the little standoffish and like a little rude maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Not rude. You were a little distrusting, I would say, and standoffish. And I thought, oh, um, this may not go well. <laughs> this may be some work. <laughs> I even talked to Pete about, yeah, I don't, I'm going to be seeing her sister, but I'm not sure that uh, Desiree and I are going to be seeing much of each other. <laughs> Did you have any second guesses? Yeah, I wasn't too sure how it was going to go. I think, for me, the turning point was when you started calling me. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How I don't remember how long that took, do you? A few months, few I months. think. A few months, for sure, has to be. Yeah, it was, it was when you needed to fill out applications and when you were doing your essays. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but for me, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. It was a doing lot of fun. the essays. That was really fun. I remember we it was like, oh, let's scrap this one. Let's do another one. And they're like, okay, here we go. You had all the creative, great ideas, and I would do the typing and the editing, and yeah. we were such a great team. Meeting up at the library for those that one time for a couple hours, looking through colleges to apply for, applied to what nine colleges, and got into seven of them. So that was pretty cool. I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I, I get all choked up about it because um, you're an amazing girl. I want to be at your graduation. I want to be um, when you're in the military, whatever honors you receive, anything. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel like I'm extended family. That's my view. Like I said, the aunt I never had. <laughs> yeah. At least she didn't say grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> if you are interested in doing more for abused or neglected children in our community, contact CASA of San Luis Obispo County.